Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mindy and I am going to cook some dinner for you. Tonight we are going to have sheet pan sausage and vegetables. And this is a great way to use up all that you have left. So you can just throw whatever veggies you want in there. Honestly, you don't even have to use sausage. You could use chicken, you could use shrimp. Uh, you can, I've used extra Italian sausage that we had left over. So it's a great way to clean out the fridge, pretty healthy and tastes delicious. So I am going to walk you through dinner tonight. I started by peeling the one sweet potato that I had. I usually do about two sweet potatoes if I have them, but like I said, it's a really good dish for getting rid of extra vegetables that you have. So I'm just peeling through this and then I'm going to dice it a small amount. The smaller that you chop them, obviously the quicker that they're going to cut. So I'm just going to cut through this and make them pretty, pretty small. Then I'm going to take my zucchini and do the same deal. Um, zucchini cooks faster than the rest of them. So if you cook these larger, then they should finish in time. I like to mix all my stuff together because it makes it easier. Obviously, if you don't like your zucchini mushy, you could just hold it off and then put it in about halfway through. My daughters love Brussels sprouts, or as they call them, sprussel sprouts. Uh, so I'm just cutting the ends off of these and dicing them and putting them in. I love to put broccoli in here. I'm just cutting up a couple heads of broccoli. I also really like cauliflower, but I didn't have any, so uh, just broccoli today. I love how colorful it is, mixing all the, the greens with the oranges. Um, it makes it, and if there's white in there, it makes it a nice rainbow color. So here I'm cutting up the kielbasa sausage. I like the beef, but you can use whatever you want. I know a lot of people use chicken sausage, which is okay. I don't love it as much, but you could use chicken. You can use shrimp. You can use a whole bunch of different meats. Uh, the last time I made it, I had some leftover rotisserie chicken that I just threw in there with it. I'm using a regular, some regular potatoes as well because I only had one sweet potato, so I just wanted to make it really full so that we had a little bit of leftovers for lunches. And then I'm also throwing some carrots in there, which I don't normally do, but I wanted to use these up. Now I'm going to pour some olive oil all around and mix it in there. I like to do it in a bowl so that it gets evenly covered and then I'll pour it on my sheet pan. I have a very large sheet pan that I actually got from an auction at a school district so maybe that'll work and then I love these liners too. I will link the liners down in the description box but it makes cleanup a breeze and then I'm just seasoning it with salt and pepper and then garlic and onion seasoning. Then you'll cook it in the oven on 400. I should have preheated it before I put it in there, but you know, maybe you can do that. And then I cook it for about 25, 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how much you like. But I did about 25 minutes today and there you go. There she is. Nice, cooked up, delicious. Tonight for dinner, we're going to have shepherd's pie and we're going to make it a little budget friendly because we're only going to use one pound of top of meat. I normally use two, but 
we're gonna save some money. So we're only gonna use one. We're gonna cut up the potatoes and we're gonna boil them. I don't peel them because that's how I live my life. When I cut them, you wanna put them in? Yep. Okay. So I am just cutting up my russet potatoes. I like to make baked potatoes. I don't care for russets that much, but they're way cheaper, so we're using them this go around, but I like yellow or gold, Yukon gold potatoes the best. But if you can get yourself a little helper, then I think that would make making dinner amazing. So see if you can find one of those. going to boil the potatoes until they're tender and we are going to brown and season the meat. Want to stir? Mm -hmm. And put some pepper in it. garlic and onion seasoning. All right, we are just browning up this hamburger. It's seasoned and then we're um, making the mashed potatoes as well. And what I love about this recipe is, you know, once, once you're done with one thing, you can start another thing because you're going to pile it all together so it can finish at any time it doesn't you don't have to time it well so I'm gonna get the gravy going so the meat's done I'm gonna get the gravy going and finish up with cooking the potatoes um, once they're nice and soft and tender you make them into mashed potatoes here I am emptying out all the liquid from the potatoes and then I'm going to put it back in the pan and add um, margarine or butter, whatever you like. I'm using Brummel Brown, Brummel and Brown here. And then some milk. And you know, if you're like me, you just use the milk and then you use some more and then you use some more. I'm making these garlic mashed potatoes because yum. And I'm gonna start mashing it and realize that, oh, I need some more liquid. They're still too dry, so I'm gonna add some more milk. Keep smashing, keep smashing. I don't know if I'm just bad at guessing or if it's because it's still on the stove and the burner's still warm, but we're gonna add some more milk. This is the staple of the meal, so you do want the mashed potatoes to be nice and creamy and delicious. Feel free, instead of using the masher, to, to put them in the mixer or use a mixer. Uh, the gravy is almost done. And once it's done, we're going to layer it all into the dish. So start off by uh, dumping all... I do all of the mashed potatoes. You can obviously top it with mashed potatoes, so just put part of it in. But I like to put all of the mashed potatoes in the bottom. And I like to grease the pan because it makes cleaning easier. So straighten all that out. And then I'm adding green beans here. Notice straight from the can, not even heated up because it's gonna heat up in the oven. And then creamed corn uh, because I like that it adds some creaminess to it. You can use regular corn if you so desire. Then I'm gonna add the beef, the seasoned hamburger on top and even that out. And then we'll top with the gravy. I like to use brown gravy. You could use chicken or turkey if you want to. And then if you like cheese, um, put cheese on all of it. My husband doesn't love a lot of cheese, so I just put it on half for my kids and I to eat. And then the other half without cheese, because I could take it or leave it. It is whatever it is. Uh, and then you're gonna heat the oven to 400 degrees and uh, cook it for about 20 to 25 minutes, depending, I leave mine uncovered because I like the cheese to crisp up. 
and then here it is nice and delicious I'm gonna serve it on little plates for my daughters don't worry I had a big plate Hey guys, tonight we are going to have tater tot casserole and I thought I would take you along and show you how we make it. So we are going to brown a pound of hamburger. So let's start with that. We're gonna start uh, with some olive oil in the pan and then I like to heat up some minced garlic and get that nice aromatic if you will. I'm gonna swirl that around until it's nice and warm and then we're going to add the beef in there and just brown it. We're also going to season it. Season it however you like. Here I'm adding some salt and then some pepper. And then I like this garlic and onion seasoning. I found it TJ Maxx. I'm sure that you can find it on Amazon, but I kind of like the seasonings that TJ Maxx has. And I add this into my hamburger all the time. So once that is all the way browned, you're gonna want it all the way brown, then you're going to put it into the casserole dish. Okay, well I guess I didn't film the clip of me mixing, but you mix two cans of cream of whatever soup. Some people use cream of mushroom, but I don't actually like mushroom, so I use cream of chicken soup. And then I mixed it with a can of cream style corn, because I like how creamy it makes it. And then um, put the tater tots on top of it after it's all mixed together. Uh, you could use green beans if you want to add those. You could use both of them um, or peas or whatever vegetable you want. We're putting this in at 350 for 50 to 55 minutes, depending on how well you like it done. I'm going to pull it out and look at that. Delicious. Hey guys, happy Sunday. I am going to put some dinner in the crock pot. I am going to make chicken and gravy in the crock pot and I would thought, I thought I would show you what I do. I, hey, get down. I do not have all the ingredients so I'll tell you what you need um you need some chicken and I'm gonna dice mine up I've been liking that better this shreds but we'll see how dicing it goes and then you need some cream of chicken soup and then you need some chicken gravy and I only have brown gravy so we're gonna see if that works out just fine and then um I'm gonna also put carrots in mine because vegetables and then we're gonna let it all cook and I'm gonna make some mashed potatoes and serve it over mashed potatoes so
Okay, so to make the gravy mixture, you're just gonna take two cans of cream of chicken soup um, and then make sure that you get them open. So if not, you're gonna have to use the can opener. And then you're going to mix your packet of gravy. Remember, you need chicken gravy, not the brown gravy. Although it did end up tasting pretty good. Um, the color was slightly off, but then just mix in the gravy. And uh, you're also going to mix in half a cup of chicken broth. So I just made my own with some chicken granules. But if you have that, then just mix it in. It made it pretty liquidy at the end so i'm sure that if you're using two cans of the cream of chicken that and mixed with the the chicken in the crock pot that it'll come out gravy gravy -y enough um so you just have to decide what kind of gravy you like if you like it on the thinner then add some of the chicken broth if you like thicker gravy then you probably can skip it um, i'm also seasoning the crock pot here with some salt and pepper uh, and then you're going to cook it. I cooked mine for five hours. I just used my timer, but you can do it on high for four hours. You could even cook it up to six hours, depending on when you need dinner. Bye. So now that the crock pot is almost done cooking, I am going to make up the mashed potatoes. Today I am using the Yukon Gold potatoes for my mashed potatoes. Um, so I'm just dicing them up pretty small so that it doesn't take as long. Again, I leave the skin on. That's just how I live my life, but peel them if you so desire. And then we're going to boil these on the stove. Uh, until they're nice and tender and then I just like to hand mash mine but you are welcome to mix them I always add in butter that today I use butter for the mashed potatoes um, and then milk I didn't add garlic because uh, I did not I missed that step today so I'm just mashing these up until they're nice and creamy and smushed up real good Adding some more milk, obviously, since I'm so good at guesstimating how much I need. They are still pretty dry, so I'm going to add some more milk. And then once this is done, it's ready to serve up dinner. And we just dish these this up in a bowl 